Hello, this is Mr. Gelmo with the 10.3 parallelogram and triangle area. Now that we have our area formulas in place for the square and the rectangle, we can now dive into other simple figures. And today we're going to be seeing the, the derivation of the area formulas for the parallelogram and the triangle. Where we'll begin is actually with some jargon that we introduced with both of them, and then we'll look at the derivations of both of these figures. So we start with the parallelogram, and the jargon we use is this jargon of what we call base and height, base and height. So what we're looking at with the formulas for the day, we're going to be using these two, these two, uh, fra these two words as the dimensions of our, essentially the dimensions that we're going to be using to find the area of our parallelogram and triangle, and we use these dimensions of base and height. And now, specifically for a parallelogram, the base can be any side, so choose a side. Then the height of that parallelogram is thus the distance between that chosen side and the opposite side. Because those two opposite sides will be parallel, we then know that the distance, or that height really is the distance, so it is that perpendicular that lies along uh, those, par those parallels. And we know that the distance is equally measured. It's actually equidistant between parallels. It's something we proved way back in chapter five. Uh, so really, no matter which side you pick uh, to be the base, you will then always find the height to be that perpendicular between the two uh, sides, the, the, the base that you've picked and then the opposite side. So in the diagram below, you'll see that in the first diagram, I've chosen the base, the bottom side. The height then, as I've, I've labeled there, that is the perpendicular from the opposite side to that side chosen as the base. And really that height is the same no matter where I drop it from. I just have to pick one point uh, on the line containing the opposite side and I know that that perpendicular to the base or the line containing the base it will be the same length, uh, distance or the same length. Uh, or in the right uh, diagram, I've chosen the base to be the left-hand side of my parallelogram, and you'll see I've also drawn the height in. That height, again, is equidistant between those parallels, again, something proven back in Chapter 5. And so I just know as uh, what I'm looking for is, or sorry, when we derive the area of our parallelogram, what we're looking for is the length of both of these, uh, these segments here, the base and our chosen height. Okay, uh, we use the exact same jargon in a triangle as well. And so again, you choose a side, okay? The base is a, a side of your choice, and then the height is the distance from the line through that side to the opposite uh, to the opposite vertex. So essentially, uh, we find that opposite vertex and we drop our height to the line containing that opposite side, which we've chosen as the base. And you'll see that in our diagram below, uh, we've got our, uh, in the left side, we've got our base chosen as the bottom, uh, left left diagram there, and the height is from the opposite vertex perpendicular right, and we actually have a name for that segment. That is our, in fact, that is our um, altitude of a triangle. And so you can also associate the altitude length as the length of the height of the triangle. Uh, same goes in the, so, same story goes for the right, uh, right-hand side diagram where we've chosen a second side as the base, which is that kind of left-hand side of our triangle, and the height, again, is this altitude drawn from that vertex to the opposite side. Now, in our description of our height, we also need to actually include this from the line through that side because uh, where that altitude or where that height falls it's not necessarily guaranteed to be on the inside. So again, uh, those two diagrams, or two diagrams we just saw above in that last slide we show that the height was actually on the interior, but this isn't guaranteed, it's not inevitable, uh, which means that there are two other places we can find the height. The height could actually be along a side or it could be on the outside, which is really looking at the three special, or three, three um, cases that our triangle can really fit in, the three classifications of our triangle. So the height could be along a side, which really means our triangle's right. Um, when we saw the height on the inside of our triangle, that means we were dealing with a, an acute triangle where, the, where all altitudes would be on the inside of our triangle. With a right triangle, really the height could be along a side. It's, it's going to be one of the legs of our right triangle. Uh, we can associate the height then because it is that length that forms the perpendicular to the opposite side. And so we see in the diagram below, if we choose one leg as the base, then the other leg would be the height. So find the area of a right triangle is very nice because we, we know uh, from the length of the two legs, we can actually find the area um, using the height and the base as those two legs. Um, when we find our height to be on the outside, it's our last case, our last classification of our triangle, which is an obtuse triangle. And so if we drop the altitude from any of the acute angles of an obtuse triangle, we'll find that that height's going to be on the outside. Uh, so we still need that height to intersect uh, 
the opposite side, but it's not necessarily intersecting the opposite side directly. It's really intersecting the line containing the opposite side, which is why we have this little extra phantom length included, which is essentially the line, part of the line that's containing the base that's been extended out until we meet that point of intersection of where the altitude is dropped in from that opposite vertex. And so we'll find that when the derivation of our triangle, really we're going to take a little bit of a, uh, a strategy here where we can cover all three cases um, using what we've learned about the parallelogram. Um, but all, uh, what we'll find is all, in all three cases that the derivation of the triangle air formula will end up with the same thing. It's just the um, the proofs will be uh, will be similar, right? The proofs will actually be similar no matter where we find our height to be dropped, whether on the inside, along the side, or outside of our triangle. So we begin with the derivation of a parallelogram. So what we're going to do is we start with a, just a simple parallelogram ABCD, where I've got the base labeled as a letter B and the height labeled as letter H. Whenever you see that dashed line there, you just go ahead and assume that is perpendicular to the opposite side. Um, I'm not going to kind of muddle it up with all the right angles that we've got in there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to find the area of a parallelogram in terms of its base and its height. So let's dive in of how we're going to do this. Really the trick or strategy we're going to take is to box it up. What we're going to do is we're going to construct a rectangle, AFGD, that actually fits over uh, our, our parallelogram uh, where it matches up with our point A and our point D, right, which was given of our parallelogram. And the reason why we want to kind of box it up is because we know what the area formula of a rectangle is. And we're going to use that then to derive our area formula of our parallelogram. So let's go ahead now um, in this space provider, let's go ahead and prove the area formula of the parallelogram. Now, as we saw in our last lesson with the derivation of our rectangle, it's not going to be so much of a um, structured proof, um, but we will be able to justify every single statement we make uh, with one of our reasons, whether that reason now includes the uh, area formulas of our previous shapes, such as the area formula of a rectangle, but also it'll include our postulates that we've learned, um, such as the area addition postulate, area congruence postulate, things of that nature as well. So where we begin is actually I want to begin by labeling a few areas within our parallelogram. So I'm going to highlight first A to B, B to G, G to D, and D back to A. So there's a section that I just highlighted. I'm going to call that section A sub 1. Um, so you notice that this little section here is actually a portion of the original parallelogram. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label uh, the remaining part of my parallelogram. This was the uh, from point G to C, point C to D, and then point D back to G. Now that area, that little triangle that's uh, cut off of our parallelogram, uh, we're going to call that A sub 2. And then last but not least, we have this, this third area that was that comes alongside with when we boxed up our parallelogram, uh, this area of from B to F, F to A, and then A back to B. So I'm going to call that little area there A sub 3. Okay, A sub 3. Uh, so first thing we want to note is that the area of our parallelogram, so I'm going to call this area of P-gram, is really the sum of area sub 1 plus the area sub 2. And that's using our area, uh, sorry, area addition postulate. We know the sum of the parts of the subregions is equal to a whole. So now uh, we're going to take that and we're going to actually develop a way of actually showing them that the area of the parallelogram is in fact uh, based around the, the base and the height of this parallelogram. So next thing I want to actually dive into is the area of the rectangle that's formed. So we've got this new rectangle right that we boxed up, AFGD, and we notice that the area of this rectangle really is the sum of the area of 1 and the area of 3, right? We see the area of 1 and area of 3, which we know the area of 1 and area of 3 is really the area of the rectangle, which we know is the product of its dimensions. Well, think about what's going on. One side, uh, one dimension of our rectangle there is the side B, right? So we've got this side here, side B. And then the other dimension is this height, which is our, our length of H. Because the height is equidistant between the parallels, we know that from A to F is the same distance or same length as from any of the perpendiculars we drop from the opposite sides. So we know then the area of this rectangle is simply just B times H. Now, there's one other piece of information we need, and then we're going to put all the pieces together. And that is this. Take a look at the two triangles formed, A, B, F, and D, C, G. As it turns out, we can actually prove those triangles to be congruent. Um, when we prove those triangles to be congruent, that means we've got ourselves the area congruence postulate, which says that the area sub 2 is equal to the area sub 3. And then because of that, uh, we are going to use that last piece of information, combine a few pieces of information, and we'll find the area formula of our parallelogram. So I'm going to go back to that area, uh, this top equation here. I'm going to put this all together. So the area of our parallelogram, remember, is the sum 
as a sub 1 plus a sub 2. Now what this means for us is every time we see a sub 2, we know that's really equal to a sub 3 based on the area congruence postulate. So I can take out the a sub 2 and replace it with a sub 3, which then I have the sum of a sub 1 plus a sub, a sub 3. But remember, we know what a sub 1 plus a sub 3 is. That's the area of a rectangle, which happens to be the base times the height, which that means, take a look at the entire transitivity we've got, uh, transitivity quality we've got going on there, which then we derive our end result, which shows that the area of our parallelogram is simply just base times height. And there we have it, uh, the area formula derived of our parallelogram. So in terms of its base, remember it's any side chosen, and the height, which is that perpendicular to that base from the uh, point of the opposite side, we then have ourselves our area formula of the parallelogram. So there's our conclusion. We find that the area of the parallelogram is the product of its base and height, right, in terms of B representing the length of the base and H representing the length of height, and we've got our area of our parallelogram which we will find not on this homework assignment the use of, but we'll move into our next lesson actually using this area formula of the parallelogram and using the area formula of the, tra of the triangle. We'll see that in our next lesson actually applying those. So now what we want to do is move toward the triangle. And to kind of give you an idea of strategy of where we're going to be going with finding the, the area formula of a triangle is to think of a parallelogram. So we go back to the parallelogram, which we just determined is the base times height. And what we can do is in terms of a parallelogram, it, a parallelogram really is two congruent triangles joined along a pair of sides that correspond. Because when we draw a diagonal within a parallelogram, as it turns out, the diagonal actually cuts our parallelogram into two congruent triangles. And we know that by our area congruence postulate that the area of both of those triangles must be equal, which means we're going to be using the area formula of a parallelogram to, to help us derive the area formula of the triangle. So where we begin is just simply let's start with our triangle ABC. And we've already got then our, our terms labeled, which remember the uh, dimensions that we'll be using for the area of a triangle is the base and the height. And so we've chosen AB to be the base B, and then the height would come from the opposite vertex point B, which is that length of H. So we're going to find our area formula again to be in terms of B and H. It's going to represent the area of this triangle ABC. Now we're going to uh, use the case where the altitude is on the inside, right, where we find um, the height to be on the inside of our triangle. And the other cases are similar, right, where the height's along the side or height's on the outside. We're actually going to be able to approach it the, in a similar fashion, constructing what we're going to find uh, to be a parallelogram and then using our information parallel parallelogram to derive the area formula of the triangle. So where we begin is actually by constructing some parallels. Off the point C and off the point B, let's construct the segment BD through point B that's parallel to our side AC. And let's then construct the side of, uh, sorry, the segment CD, which is parallel to side C or parallel from point C parallel to side AB. And those two segments would actually intersect at point D. So what we've done is we've constructed this. Right, those two segments are parallel, these two segments are parallel. So then what do we conclude about this this uh, this shape that we've dealing with here, A, B, C, D, or sorry, A, B, D, C. We conclude that this is actually a parallelogram, right? We know that this is a parallelogram. And so let's go ahead and now use the parallelogram to help us derive the area formula of the triangle. Well, we can be begin by saying, we know what the area of this, of this shape is. So this area of this p-gram here, and this parallelogram, is really then uh, the air is base times the height, right? Because we know we have the dimensions. One side is the base B, and we have that height, which is that perpendicular from the opposite side, uh, perpendicular to that base, so it's H. So we know the area of the parallelogram is, is uh, B plus H, or so B times H. But when we've got this cell, when we got this to be a parallelogram, we know something about the area. So let's treat the area of A to B, B to C, A to B, A to C as A sub one, and we know that the A sub one, excuse me, and we know that the area B to D, B to C, D to C, and C to B, we'll call that A sub two. So those are the areas of those two triangles. Well, what we're going to find then is that this parallelogram is really the sum of those two areas, and Remember that we're going to find these two triangles to actually be provably congruent, and that's very simple to prove. Now we've got a parallelogram. We've got uh, all, all all the properties that come along with parallelograms, which means we know opposite sides to be equal. We know the opposite um, angles to be equal, which really, uh, with opposite sides being equal and the common side there, we have enough to declare congruence between the two triangles, uh, the, the area sub 1, area sub 2. So we know the area sub 1 and area sub 2 are equal, which then means what we can do is we can take area sub 1, area sub 2, whenever we see that, we can replace it with 
than uh, one of the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace area sub one, or sorry, area sub, area sub two with area sub one. So I get this area sub one plus area sub one, which is really equal to two times area sub one. Now what that really shows is that we have this two times area sub one is equal to the base times the height. Well, we divide by two on both sides and we get the area sub one, which is really our triangle, uh, our original triangle ABC. And we end up with, with one half base times height. And there is our derivation of triangle. Now you'll see that on the worksheet, all I'm really going to have you guys do is walk through the derivation of our parallelogram and through the derivation of the air, uh, triangle area formulas. And you'll find that there is kind of a surprise theorem at the very end, um, which uses the area of triangles to help you derive kind of a special theorem. Um, that's really the all there all, all, all is to the worksheet tonight. It's just the derivations of the parallelogram formula and the triangle formula. So to conclude, right, our, our conclusion then with our um, uh, what we found with that last slide is the area formula or the area of our parallelogram is base times height, but since it's divided into two congruent triangles, we know that each area then is half that area of base times height. So we conclude then the area of our triangle then must be half base times height. And there we have it, uh, the two area formulas derived. Now you'll find those also on your posture theorem handout, uh, but these are not too bad to easily tuck into those uh, brain molecules of yours. So be sure to take a look at that 10.3 homework assignment on the parallelogram and triangle area and you'll find that we'll be using these uh, area formulas in the next lesson 10.4 uh, for application. Um, so hang on till then to see some application then. If you do have any questions on the homework assignment 10.3, don't hesitate to email me with that. Be good and do good.